This is week seven of the winter trimester. I'm Jennifer Marie and this is my atelier diary. Right now I'm in a hotel room in DC. Eric's here on business and I'm tagging along so I can study the Rembrandts that are in the museums here and also all the other good paintings here. So if you're interested in that, I'll definitely be talking about that in my next week's video. But so for this week, this was another week of things are going unexpectedly. Last week I talked about how we hired this new model, Brittany, to do a long pose. She was having some issues with feeling dizzy the first day. Um, we don't want her to hurt herself or anything, so uh, we let her go home early and she wasn't feel feeling comfortable modeling until she saw her doctor later last week. She saw her doctor and got the okay that um, she was all good to model. So. Uh, what we ended up doing last week was just in case it wasn't going to work out with Brittany for the five week long pose We had Kevin come in and he did a pose for a day And so I ended up starting a transfer drawing of him just in case he was going to end up being the long pose On Monday Brittany got the okay from her doctor that everything was good to go So on Monday she came in and she started doing the standing pose and started feeling dizzy again so we want to make sure everything's good for her so we asked if she wanted to do a, se a seated pose so she said she did so we got her in a seated pose and she modeled for we do, we do these it's three hours a day with the model but they model for 25 minutes and then they get breaks in between that and so i started a transfer drawing and worked on it for 25 minutes so after the 25 minutes she had her break or was having her break and said she felt hot so she wanted to go outside to get some air and so she grabbed her bag and her stuff and then just didn't come back which i've never heard of that happening with a model before so she was obviously not doing the long pose anymore so um we got kevin to come in to finish the long pose but he couldn't come until thursday so to fill that gap we had another michael <clears throat> we had another model come in that's named michael and so he was there for two days so for those two days i did a color study so on tuesday i had a scrap of linen to do this color study and i was mostly focused on getting just the gesture and proportion and Michael, I'm, I've drawn him a couple times before and I've always had trouble getting his gesture in proportion because he's a, a shorter guy but has a lot of muscle on him too. So to balance that out right, um, I was just having some problems with it. So, but for this first day, I only mixed up a shadow color and then the background color. And so that's how I was painting, just the shadow shape, light shape, and then the background. And then on Wednesday, he came back and having a fresh eye, I could see that the proportions that I had drawn were pretty off. I uh, somehow um, squished him down too far and I made his, um, his legs were the right height, but then his torso and head, I'd, I'd squished down a little bit too much. So, um, so this day I pretty much did the exact same thing that I did the day before, just focusing on gesture and proportion. I didn't mix up any more colors either, I was just working with the shadow color and the background. So still working with just the shadow shape and the light shape. And at the end of this day I was feeling a lot more happy with it. I think that it's a lot more like the gesture, a lot like Michael's body type. The portrait though <laughs> could definitely use some work but at least I got the big areas done. So I think we have him for two more days, so I hope I can get the portrait to look more like a person and um, get some color into it and start working in the lights. Thursday, Kevin came in then to continue the long pose. So I'd already worked one day on the transfer drawing, which is this, and I got it blocked in, and I have the basic lines and shapes down, but this day, this is what I had gotten down and I think I improved it a whole lot. I think structurally it makes sense. Structurally the gesture feels pretty solid and also the same body type as Kevin. And I feel like I got this all pretty fast. I remember working through this drawing and just as I'm drawing just circling around the figure and really making sure that all the lines were making sense and connecting into other lines. So when I would draw like a line that represented the top of his head, I would immediately draw the bottom of his foot or the shoulder to a hip. So it's not working in one area, but really um, 
circling around the figure and making sure that you're taking in the whole image and not focusing on or getting tunnel vision and focusing on just a small part of it so everything works together. So for critique on Thursday, Matt came around and he was surprised by how fast I got it too and said that I could transfer it tomorrow, which is awesome because this transfer drawing then only took two days and usually I'm begging Matt and Magda to let me paint because painting is way more fun for me than drawing. Um, but they always want me to work on my transfer drawings longer. So that was a nice vote of confidence for me that he was saying like, yeah, you sh you've got a nice solid map that you can um, make a painting out of. And he was also saying that um, because there was kind of, we're kind of off a week because Brittany was gonna model, then she wasn't, then she was, and then she just walked out. So um, we're a week behind. So he was also saying that it's enough for what I need to have a map to paint over. But he was saying if we did have more time, um, he would have liked me to work on the transfer drawing more so I could find more things with charcoal. But he said that what I have is good enough that I should be able to find those things with working with paint. And then on Friday, I transferred the drawing. And I must say, this is the best first wash I think that I've done so far. And I did something different. Usually when I transfer a drawing, what I do is I take tracing paper over my drawing and I'll trace out the big gestural lines with a Sharpie. I'll take that tracing paper off the drawing, turn it around so I'm working on the reverse image and I will mix up a dark color of paint and I'll trace over the marker lines on the back of the tracing paper. Once I've got paint all on those lines, I will put it back up onto my canvas the right way and then I'll take a ballpoint pen and trace on the marker line so the ballpoint pen is pushing the paint in these like razor thin lines onto the canvas. That's how I usually transfer but I wanted to try a different method this time. This is something that Magda does and I haven't done it before which is transferring with charcoal instead of paint. So when you transfer with charcoal, it's basically the same thing, except for instead of putting paint on the back of your tracing paper, you're putting a really soft charcoal on. So I use the Neutrum charcoal. Um, I'm not sure what it's called, but it comes in the yellow box. It's got the yellow piece of paper around the end of it. So it's a really soft charcoal. And so once I've got the charcoal on the back of the tracing paper and put it up on my canvas, instead of using a ballpoint pen, I used an H um, Neutrum charcoal, so a harder charcoal that's sharpened into a razor blade. And then I'll push that onto the lines to really push the soft charcoal on the back of the tracing paper onto the canvas. And so when I took the tracing paper off, I already liked it a whole lot more than with doing it the paint way of transferring it. Because I, every time I've done it with paint, um, well one, you're using a ballpoint pen, so you, the image that's left on your canvas is made up of really razor thin sharp lines so when i step back from the painting it's really hard to see what i've done on it so and also just because you're using paint and it's a little bit more unpredictable doing it this way at least the, the way that i've been doing it it's a bit unpredictable where sometimes you'll get kind of harder lines of paint or globby lines of paint um and then it's when you're painting over that, it's hard for me to make it look more naturalistic because there'll be hard lines of paint. And then if I try and take that up off my canvas, it'll start taking the imprimatura up. So if I erase a line, you'll still see the line because instead of it just looking like the, the tone of the canvas, it'll be actually brighter. So using the charcoal, I liked a whole lot better because it looks like your transfer drawing because I did my transfer drawing in charcoal. The lines are thicker because I'm using charcoal to push the softer charcoal onto it rather than a ballpoint pen. And the charcoal just looks darker and uh, it just looks like your transfer drawing because your transfer drawing's in charcoal and then there's charcoal up <laughs> on your canvas then. So doing that too, I could, if I made a mistake with a line or needed to move a line over, I could either just rub off the charcoal with my finger or even take a dry brush with no paint on it and just kind of like lightly brush the charcoal off. So I feel like doing it this way I can get a lot better of a naturalistic image right off the bat. Also something really cool that was happening with this, oh first of all I probably should say that 
the whole wash is made just with one color. I mixed up a shadow color and so that's just one color of paint that I've been dabbing onto it and just using less paint to make the color look lighter, using more paint to make the shadows look darker. And laying it on more intentionally and a little bit thicker in the shadow areas where it needs to be darker, but then if something needs to go lighter or working on the shadow edge, taking it out into darker half tones, I'll kind of just scumble and brush the paint on a little bit more scratchy. But cool things were happening with this wash because um, before I know I've talked about that, I feel like something will switch in my brain where I start painting and I'm thinking that I just have to be painting and when I'm drawing, I'm just drawing. But I'm kind of getting this more fluid way of thinking about when I'm drawing, I can be doing it in a painterly way and then when I'm painting, I can also be doing it in more in like a draftsman way. So example of this, instead of just doing brush strokes, for example, I took my brush and had some paint on it and I would just make hash marks going down like hatching like you would when you're drawing and then also I would take a paper towel and I would fold it so I had a nice hard edge and I could take that over areas and do the same thing where you're just hatching but the paper towel then's actually pulling the paint up so it's like how I would have been using my kneaded eraser where I'd make a fine point on my kneaded eraser and make hatch marks that lighten up an area so this is the first time that I've done that with paint and I think it's just interesting all the different ways that you can use paint to get different effects. All in all, this week and last week has been crazy with models canceling and then trying to get different models to fill in. So these last two weeks um, I've worked on two transfer drawings and two color studies with four different models and while that's definitely frustrating because the plan was to only work with one model and do one long pose. Finding the good in it, it's definitely g good to be doing these shorter poses that only last for two days or four days or something like that or one day because or just 25 minutes because going back to how you start a painting and which is getting a really structural representation of the gesture and body type or even just working on a wash or color studies it's really helping me to stay in that mindset to just really work on building a really good foundation for a painting so even though these frustrating things that are unexpected happen it's always good too because at least in this way, I'm getting a lot more practice starting a painting and learning how to start a painting really well. Because now I feel, I feel confident in getting a transfer drawing done and knowing that given enough time, I can get a really strong structural representation of gesture and body type and likeness. And then moving forward from that, I'm really confident that with getting the first wash and the first the, that first stage in a painting, I can get it to look really naturalistic. Going then further into a block-in, not quite as confident with that. That's something that I definitely want more practice on. And then the last step from block-in to um, resolving your painting is something that I don't know if I'll ever feel totally confident in because the most wonderful thing about painting is that you can just take it so far and push it so far and there's just all these different elements that you can apply to it like atmosphere and texture and um, I think that's one of those things that I'll always be raising the bar on myself so I might not ever be totally satisfied with what I'm doing resolving which I think is great because then you're always pushing to be better and better but I'm just saying that even though it's been a frustrating two weeks, a lot of good has come out of it too. And finally, working on my cast painting. Ugh, this cast painting, this last week has been pretty rough for it. Um, I feel kind of stuck with it and it's just a challenging painting and it's kicking my butt right now. What I focused a lot on was, well, everything 
since this, I've been working on just getting the impression uh, in the light, so getting the color and the values right. So I'm pretty happy with how that's looking. So I'm now, instead of working the whole entire painting at once, I'm now focusing in on smaller areas because when I was working on the whole entire painting, trying to get the impression of the lights and all, all of that good stuff, I was kind of losing the drawing in the shadow shapes. So I wanna go back now this week and really refine the drawing again. So I was working on their baby head, the, the focal middle baby head, and I was first working in the lights of the, the top of the head, and uh, it's just really challenging part of it because there's so much color and there's so much contrast, and um, it's hard for me to not overdo it and make it a look overmodeled, which means over contrasted which I think I did and I think it's, it's probably just gonna take more passes over it to get it looking how I want it to one of the things is the the brightest part in the painting is the highlight on that baby's head and that highlight is the brightest but not only that it's so colorful so I was struggling with getting it to look really bright with white but making it white makes it look too pasty and pale. So then I would add yellow ochre to it or some red into it and getting it to have the same color would darken it down. So I tried as hard as I, I couldn't get it to, to go. So Matt ended up giving me um, a little dab of Michael Harding's Genuine Naples Yellow Light, which is, um, a brighter yellowy color and so I used that and I mixed that with white and I just used it in the highlight but it got it way more closer to nature so that's looking better um, and I'm probably only going to use it in that spot so I can keep using my limited palette for the rest of the painting but still not really liking how it's looking and I, I think it's just like I said I just have to keep working more on it and have more layers of paint built up on it. The other thing that I was working with was correcting the drawing of the shadow shapes like I was talking about. Um, so I was focusing a lot on the, in the baby, that baby's face, the middle one. And man, I'm having a lot of trouble with this too because the shadow shape, you want it to all look like one shadow shape because you want it to look really unified because you want the attention to be in the light and not in the shadows because that's what naturalism is all about. So trying to make the shadow shape look like one, look like even though it's segmented a lot and they're not all connected, to, but make them feel like they're connected, like make them feel like they're all part of one animal. And I'm finding that really challenging because they're really, really colorful but really unified and the edges are so um well they're so specific where they have really soft areas and really sharp areas and oh it's just i'm finding it really challenging to get this all to look unified but again i'm sure it's just i just need more more passes over it but i'm at least with the the more my morning project has been going has been going really well but the this afternoon project with my cast has been this week has just been really hard and I am painting every day on it but I am I think I'm just having a lot of self-doubt with it because I'm I just don't have it figured out yet with how to do it so I think self-doubt is making me paint slower and uh, I don't it almost feels like um because i'm painting slower maybe or i'm just like not getting the results that i want that it just looks like the painting's not progressing or moving along so it's just been a hard week for that so i'm hoping this time in dc that it'll just be good to get a break from the painting um i won't i can't look at it so um i hope when i get back into the studio i'll have a fresh eye and kind of know how to resolve some of the problems that i ran into and then for the extras during the week, I did a short drawing of Emily. And then I got to work more on my Solomon J. Solomon master copy. So just blocking in those figures. I really like, I spent most time on the figure that's on the left where 
you kind of see his, him in the, the back and his arms are out. I think he looks most structural. The other figures kind of look like noodles right now, but I'm just laying them in, so I just need more time on it. But um, really fun to work on this master copy, and I want to find some more time that I can squeeze in so I can keep this one moving along as well.